you go down to the woods today, then you better have a good excuse. And this is the longest I've spent outside since I reached an age where it's considered unacceptable to be hanging out in the woods alone. If anyone is wondering why I keep saying woods, it's because in England we don't have forests, we have woods. And even the forests in England that do call themselves forests are only doing so because they're fronting big time. We have woods because woods are unthreatening. The worst thing you could find in an English forest is a hastily abandoned adult magazine left to fester beneath a canopy of unaware fronds. But the internet put an end to that tradition in the same way that it relaunched another. Conspiracy theories and urban legends really started to thrive again once you could, at the click of a button, connect with like-minded truth seekers from all around the world. In places like the forests of the Pacific Northwest in America, the location of the oft-spotted, the oft-rumoured and oft-dismissed Sasquatch, or Bigfoot to its friends, or fronds, or at least people it trusts aren't mocking its oft-troublesome big feet. Sasquatch is an ape-like creature that stands between 6 and 10 feet tall, depending on gender or witness testimony. It's been sighted all across North America, but the accepted home range is the Pacific Northwest, an area of dense forest and rolling hills, stretching from British Columbia in Canada down to Oregon in the United States. Giant hominids are mainstays of urban legends for all cultures, with stories told on every continent except Antarctica, because penguins can't speak. English or human language. But if they could, they'd tell tales of a penguin so big and rare it could only be filmed by obsessive penguins who devote their entire lives and personalities around proving the giant penguin exists. Hey, hey. What's this? I was just doing a sort of uh, visual essay about Sasquatch. You, do you want to join? We've got some marshmallows. If you believe something is true, then you want to find evidence to support that belief. It's a natural tendency, because the last thing we need is to be oft undermined by ourselves. And even if we don't, we want to actually like ourselves. We want to feel somewhat valuable. So we want to be right about the things that we believe. It's fair enough, right? The scientific method stands opposed to that. It asks you to theorize what would disprove your theory. So, I mean, I believe that I am oft amusing and making informed comment, but if I was to receive messages telling me that I'm a snivelling blundermouse who severely misjudged the comic potential of using the prefix oft often, then I'd have to appraise my theory. Oh, you said something about marshmallows? Oh yeah, sorry man. Here you go. Okay. Likes the white ones. Like that one down, actually. Homo sapiens are the only large ape to live further afield than the tropics of Asia and Africa. The climate in the Pacific Northwest would be inappropriate for a primate that hadn't mastered clothing. Now, I say mastered, fully aware of what I'm wearing. Feels nice. Now, an ape standing up to 10 feet tall would need quite a considerable food supply unlikely to go unnoticed in a relatively small area of American wilderness. Now, sightings have been reported since the 1840s, so assuming a life expectancy of around 50 years, we're looking at maybe eight or nine generations in that time, each having six to 10 offspring and experiencing a 25% infant death rate would result in at least 1,377 Sasquatches, of which you could reasonably assume 800 should still be alive. And that's assuming their population started with two in 1840. Now, there's a minimum of 52 grey wolves in Washington state. A volunteer group gathered that data in one summer. That data was easy to gather for a far smaller animal. So why is there such a scarcity of evidence for Sasquatch? The body was recovered. Sorry, I need one more time. Mm. We've covered a body. I read about it. OK, yeah, this is a, a, an oft-reported story that someone has shot or discovered the body of Sasquatch. 
Name redacted is one such person. That's his name. Oh no, um, I'm I'm purposefully not saying his name. Name redacted. Exactly. His first name is Name. The reason that I redacted his name is because he posted a photo of himself with the body of Sasquatch that he'd baited with ribs, an ancient ape that had evaded detection in an increasingly populated and technologically advanced world, is rumbled by a rumbling from ribs. What's worse is the photo is very obviously of a costume, and the perpetrator attempted to make money by touring the body around America and charging people to view it. He's a serial offender as well. Uh, in 2008, he presented a costume stuffed full of roadkill as real, and then explained, it's just a big hoax. Bigfoot doesn't exist. Five years later, he returned with another body, and the news raced back to him like a spurned lover, desperate for affection. The great DNA announcement of 2012 is oft cited, but even the most cursory glance over the evidence is enough to disregard it as science by press release. Announce the discovery before peer review, get mainstream news coverage, and by the time the results have been dismissed, the general public have accepted the original news as fact and won't even notice any follow-up coverage that sheepishly announces, that thing we got excited about isn't really true, because the news will never run with that as a headline, because we'll never trust them again. Of course, individual hoaxes don't disprove a theory, but a well-documented history of the only tangible evidence for Sasquatch's existence later being exposed as lies and misinformation is a large tick in the reason Sasquatch doesn't exist. Of course, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the same way that you can't disprove that I'm the reincarnation of Tsar Nicholas II. What? Cut. I think we got it. We want Bigfoot to be true because it represents that element of humanity that we wished was real. Bigfoot is an early human that holds a real sense of mystery, something we don't understand but feels so real. England is desperate to have forests that hold mysteries and danger, whereas the Pacific Northwest probably fancies having a few quaint woods, not least because they'd get access to some adult magazines. We all have this vision of who we want to be that we never quite achieve, people that we don't manage to talk to, targets we never reach, and a personality we can't express. Underneath it all, no one is happy with what they've managed to craft out of themselves, and no one knows how many hammer blows we're away from a full-on meltdown. So, we want to believe we're right about certain things. Our beliefs in Bigfoot, our above-average ability to drive a car, or that Coldplay album that we bought because everyone said we should. We want to reinforce our beliefs so we listen to people who tell us that we're funny and dismiss those who don't as idiots or Broadway baby. The search for truth doesn't work like that. One day, we all have to accept that we never will be that person and nothing can tempt it out of hiding. Not midlife crises, reinvention at university or even a steaming plate of ribs in the forest. We aren't who we hope we are. We are who people think we are. And I don't think that Sasquatch is real. Well, I think you are a snivelling blundermouse. Did you hear me use that term earlier? When? Just uh, over there, we, I, I said it. Oh. Really? I thought I was the only one. Oh. Oh.